Okay, right, so we've got our link service, we're ready. We can now actually try and do something, so we can try and use it. So go back into our control plane, we can see those two linked services there. I've got my small cluster, my original one, and I've got my four node cluster. So I can now choose, I can control how much umph do I need. Let's go and create something, let's add a new pipeline. So there we go, we've got our list of activities. Most important, obviously, is Databricks. And we've got notebooks, so they're Jupyter notebooks that we've seen before. We've got jars. Now a jar is a compiled Scala file. Um, so if you're writing in Scala, that's the best way to do it. Or Python is just a straight Python script held somewhere in blob storage or something. So let's use notebook, bring it in, and name it something sensible. We're going to be doing a partitioning script, so it makes sense to call it something like that. And call our pipeline, because we're good people. Okay, so looking at that notebook activity, we can then go and set it up. We need to tell it which cluster to use. So not just which Databricks service, but which size cluster on that service. So I've got my small one, two nodes, nice and cheap. Click on that. And then under settings, I can then tell it which notebook to run. Now, I can make this dynamically generated, so I can have it so it runs based on a variable. Or it's actually got this really nice browser. I can go in the same in my workspace, go and have a look what I've got, what notebooks I've got access to, and then just do it that way. So it's fairly nice to be able to find it. Let's pick that partitioning one. And that is it. That's literally all I need to do to tell Data Factory to go and run that notebook. The hard work is in setting up that link service. Once that's done, super easy. So I actually ran it yesterday, so here's a similar one set up yesterday. We can drill down and see the details of what actually happened in that run. So you can see there is a notebook run and it succeeded, it took 36 seconds. I can see what I parsed into it, so I can see which notebook was run. But far more importantly, I can see the outputs and it gives us that really nice little URL, which if we click on it, actually takes us to a run instance of that notebook. So it's not the notebook itself. You can see it is a specific run ID, so a specific execution of that notebook. So each of the cells, each of the outputs and the timings are all from this execution. So for debugging, for going back and saying what happened at this time, that is awesome because you've got detailed logging sitting behind that data factory pipeline. And that's it really, you know, so that, that is uh, as easy as it is to create something super simple that's kicking off a notebook on a schedule.